our last class we have been discussing on uh, runtime environments and we have seen that there can be two types of environments that are possible one is uh, without uh, local procedure and another is with local procedure so without local procedure means uh, within a procedure we are not going to define any new procedures however uh, we and with local procedure mean within within a procedure so you can define your own procedures further so that the procedure is local uh, for uh, so it, the inner inner procedure is local for the outer procedure only and uh, they are not visible outside the main procedure uh, so we will come to that so this uh, the first type of case where we do not allow this uh, local procedure so that is uh, c like uh, c type of languages they have uh, this facility on the other hand so the in languages like pascal so you can have uh, 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 local procedure that is within a procedure you can define another procedure so we'll see uh, both of them and then how to uh, go for the, their uh, implementation in runtime how are they going to be handled so with local procedures or oh sorry without local procedures so uh, for languages where all procedures are global so that that is the situation where we have got uh, lo local non local procedures so here uh, you, if you look into the uh, type of these languages so if you are writing a program so you can have a main program and after that you can have a number of procedures and these procedures are visible to uh, all these procedures are visible for uh, um, in the entire program so that is the situation so we do not have difficulty as far as uh, uh, this definition of procedures are concerned however there may be uh, problems with um, uh, that situation that all the every all the procedures are visible at all, all at all places so that may be a concern and some sort of hiding that you have otherwise so that is not uh, visible so if you have got uh, some uh, design style where you have got a main operation to do and under that only certain operations are valid so that type of situation so you may like to hide the other procedures from uh, uh, this e the internal procedures from outside so that is not possible so here all procedures are global so any procedure defined in the language so, every, uh, so for the entire program it is visible so in this type of situation this stack based environment that we uh, have that we create for this uh, local procedures they need two things for the activation record one is known as frame pointer so in frame pointer so pointer to the current activation record uh, is there so that is a, there is a that's called a frame pointer so this allows access to the local variables and parameters so this actually points to the current frame that is uh, the frame corresponding to the uh, current procedure that has been called and there is another link called control link or dynamic link so that will be that will keep uh, the information about from uh, which uh, procedure this was invoked accordingly from which activation record so this activation record got created so this is basically the parent so, uh, parent relationship like if there is a say procedure p1 and that uh, procedure p1 is uh, calling if that procedure p1 is calling say procedure p2 so if p1 is calling p2 then uh, if, the, if p1 is calling p2 then in the p2's activation record so there will be a pointer which will point to this p1's uh, activation record so that will happen so that is that will be called control link or dynamic link so the idea is that when p2 will be over so we need to uh, say that p1's uh, activation record is the current one so accordingly uh, that can be active that can be made the current um, um, current uh, procedure so basically this frame pointer that we have so when we come back from p2 to p1 this frame pointer can be made to point to uh, the activation record for p1 and we keep the information about activation record of p1 in the control link of p2 so we'll see some examples that will make it uh, more clear so as we uh, as we go into uh, more and more some examples so this will be more clear so let us see how these things are going to work so this one is an example like here i have got a, a function uh, say this is a main uh, this is a function f and there is another function g and we have got a main routine so as there is uh, so this f and g you see they are uh, global procedures or global functions whatever you call it and that is uh, available throughout the program we have got a global variable integer x2 uh, here and the within these functions f and g 
we have got uh, these uh, local variables. So, so this uh, this is static uh, a i integer, integer and this is a normal integer. So, this is uh, this is a local integer. So, this is a local variable y is a local variable and x since it is defined as a static integer. So, that in that sense it becomes global. So, it gets allocated to the uh, static area or the global area. So, you see that uh, in this area uh, this uh, x are the main program the global variable x and this static variable x. So, they have been allotted. Now, when this function is called so from the main routine. So, this is the activation record for main and from main we have given a call to g. So, in the call for g we have got uh, this uh, variable. Mm, so, this, this activation record got created when this uh, uh, when this function uh, uh, g is called. So, this part of the activation record is created and there we have got uh, this uh, this is the parameter m that is passed. So, it is getting the value g x and this x refers to this global variable x. So, m is, m is uh, getting the value 2. So, this parameter is passed after that there is a control link and that control link points to the previous frame. Okay. So, from where this g has been invoked. So, this g has been invoked from this main. So, as a result this control link points to this. So, then we have got uh, there is this return address. So, that, that will be stored and a local variable y has been created. So, y is uh, y is allocated space in the activation record for g and y equal to m minus 1. So, y evaluates to 1 at this point of time. Okay. So, after some time when uh, this, uh, this point comes it is calling the function f and as a result there will be another activation record created for this uh, call f. And in that we have got uh, this uh, this parameter has got a parameter n. So this n is uh, given uh, allocated space onto this activation record, and this value of n is equal to the value of y, and value of y was one. So this gets the value one, and the control link in the activation record for f it points to the uh, for, uh, for, uh, it points to the uh, frame corresponding to the function g from where the f is called like here the function uh, uh, function f is called from function g. So, this activation record uh, uh, this control link points to the uh, previous uh, frame from where this particular call was invoked. And then at the uh, at some point later when it, uh, in the call of f. So, here again g is called. So, f and g are they are two mutually recursive procedure. So, at some point of time suppose this uh, g has been called within f. So, as a result so the next activation record for g will be getting created and here I will have this uh, this this m. So, the here uh, we have got uh, this call to g and g has got parameter m. So, this m is coming and this m is uh, assigned the value 1 because uh, this uh, g of uh, this is calling uh, g of uh, n. So, whatever value was passed here. So, with that it is called. So, it is calling with n 1. So, that way uh, this is uh, uh, this will be this g is called with the value of uh, m being equal to 1 and then the control link points to the previous activation record of f and uh, this return address and the, the another copy of this local variable is created y that is made equal to 0 because that is equal to m minus 1 it evaluates to 0. And then you see that this control link points to the previous activation record and the current frame pointer points to this current frame the, la the currently active procedure and the stack pointer points to the point up to which uh, this is full this, uh, this stack is full activation record stack is full. So, it, it points to that. So, this is the snapshot of the program when uh, uh, main has called g, g has called f and f has called g uh, recursively. So, this is the, the situation. Okay. Now, after uh, say this g gets over, okay, so in the execution of g, so suppose y is such that, so y is equal to 0, so it will not call f anymore, so it will be over after some time. Then this part of the activation record will get deleted and this uh, frame pointer, it will get the value from this control link. So, what this control link we are storing the uh, uh, frame pointer for the previous uh, activation record. So, that value will be copied to the frame pointer as a result the frame pointer will be coming to this point. It will point to the activation record for f and once this is de deleted. So, stack pointer will automatically come to this point. 
after some time when this one also gets over so this will get deleted and now the frame pointer will get the value of previous control link that we had so this control link was pointing this so this frame pointer will be coming to this point okay and this stack pointer will come to this point so this way uh, the, so this one also get deleted, destroyed so this way this activation records they grow dynamically on two stack so as and when we are calling a new procedure the corresponding activation record is getting created and it is getting stored into the stack now so this is fine so this is fine as long as we do not have uh, local procedures uh, now, how do you access variables? So, this is a typical uh, situation where we have got uh, this uh, frame. Okay, so this is this is a uh, this is a frame in the activation record, and in that frame, uh, so there is a frame pointer. So this frame pointer, so this actually points to the uh, uh, points to a position where uh, before. Uh, so uh, uh, so there is a portion of the activation record above the frame pointer and there is a portion of the um, activation record below the frame pointer. So, above frame pointer, so we have got the parameters that are passed. Okay. So, parameters and local variables, so these are the two things that uh, the compiler will need to access, need to um, um, uh, get the addresses, so that during execution those locations can be accessed by the uh, uh, computer. So, this is uh, parameter and local variables they are found by offsets from the current frame pointer. So, current frame pointer is here and above that there will there is a the control link is stored. So, this is again an address so certain number of bytes will be needed. So, above that we have got all the parameters. So, this portion is for the parameters. This portion is for the parameters. So, in this case we have got only one parameter m, so that is stored there. And then, uh, so starting from the frame pointer, so you, if you go by a negative offset, so, uh, you, so go, go by a positive offset, so you can find, you can reach this particular point. So, this, uh, this uh, offset for the uh, parameters. On the other hand, these local variables, so they are stored af after the uh, frame pointer. So that, that, so that is after this frame pointer, we have got this return address, and after that, we have got all the offsets, uh, all the local variables created. So the local variable y gets created here. So you can understand that the offset of this um, uh, frame pointer is um, the offset of these um, uh, parameters is equal to the size of control link. Okay, so, the, that is the beginning of the parameter. So, in this particular case there is only one parameter. So, the offset of m is equal to size of control link equal to plus 4 bytes. And in this function g that we had previously considered there is only one local variable that is named y. So, offset of y is size of y plus size of return address because we have got uh, this field size of so the size of return address will come and after that we have got this space for y. So, they so negative of that. So, minus of size of y plus size of return address. So, if this frame pointer is say 1000, then this uh, uh, offset of y becomes 994. Okay. So, 2 bytes are uh, used for storing the return address and 2 bytes are used for uh, storing this uh, y. So, we can say that uh, at, at, a, at an offset of so, return address is 2 bytes and say this, say this integer is 4 bytes. So, as a result total is 6. So, from 994, so this, uh, so this is uh, 4 bytes, if I take integer to be 4 bytes. So, this will be to my 2 plus 4, 6. So, it will be by minus 6 offset from the uh, frame pointer. So, this m and y, so they can be accessed by 4 fp and minus 6 fp. So, 4 fp means it is uh, fp plus, plus 4 and then this uh, minus 6 fp means fp minus 6. So, these are the two values that we have. So, accordingly it can access the uh, parameters and this uh, local variables. So, this accessing of this parameters and local variables are with respect to the frame pointer. Next, uh, so, if I, if I have got multiple number of parameters passed or multiple number of local variables, so their offsets will be calculated accordingly. The compiler can find out uh, the, the actual byte at which this, uh, this value will be stored. So, it can do that. Okay. 
so activation record creation so uh, so there is some part of responsibility on uh, on behalf of the caller the function which calls this new function and uh, uh, the procedure which calls the uh, inner procedure and then there is and there is responsibility of the callee also so this caller pro caller calls the callee so this activation record creation it is partial responsibility is with the caller and partial responsibility with the callee so let us see what are the things that are going to happen uh, at a call at the caller end first at the caller end so it will be uh, allocating the basic frame because the first a frame has to be created so that frame gets created by the caller store parameters so parameter values will be stored there so it, you can understand that uh, so it is it is like this so this activation record suppose this is the activation record that has been created by the caller okay so in that caller so it will be first it will store the parameters so in the first part it will be storing the all the parameters all parameters are stored then it will store the return address so this is the return address that is stored so these are known by the caller so they are filled by the caller and then there may be some registers cpu registers which are saved by the caller because there, there may be some registers which are very useful for the caller and the caller does not want that the callee routine should override them okay so that way it can save some registers so some uh, save registers which are important for the caller so that can happen and after that it will store self frame pointer so it will store the uh, frame pointer in in the actually this is that um, uh, so it will uh, the, the self uh, so the, the frame pointer that i had previously so that frame pointer will be stored here and then it will jump to the child routine so so this set frame pointer for child so frame pointer so for, for child will be pointing to this new frame pointer and then it will be jumping to the child routine at the callee end we have got the there may be some registers that callee wants to save so they will be saved um, and then uh, ex this, uh, it may like to say save some state of some variables also so that can also be uh, saved then extend the frame for locals after that it will extend this frame so that it can uh, create all the local variables there so this is the all this is the space for the locals local variables and then it will fall through the code so this is the responsibility on part of the callee similarly when we are returning from the procedure then th there is there are certain responsibilities for the caller and certain responsibilities for the callee on the caller side it will copy the return value deallocate uh, so, so let us first talk about the callee because uh, while returning callee's uh, portion comes first so it will store the, the return address a return value in the uh, in the in the slot in the activation record restore callee saved registers and state so uh, whatever registers callee had saved so they will be retrieved and they will be restored then unextend frame so unextend frame means this locals will get deleted this stack pointer will be uh, incremented as a result all the locals will get deleted then uh, uh, restore parents frame pointer so uh, frame pointer of parent was stored so that is restored now and it will jump to the return address available in the activation record so this way so this is the portion of the job that is done by the callee on the other hand the caller it will copy return value so the return value may be copied into some uh, some variable or so so that will be done by the caller so then the uh, the frame will get deallocated and so the caller saved registers whatever registers the caller had saved so it may like to restore those registers so that way this will be done now one thing you should understand that this uh, saving of registers and all so it is uh, very much uh, dependent on uh, the system okay so it may it may in some uh, cases so it may be that uh, this uh, saving registers is necessary some cases it is not uh, that important so based on that so this compiler designer may take a decision that whether to save these uh, uh, registers into the uh, frame or not okay so next we will be looking into uh, this environment with local procedures like if there are local procedures in my um, uh, in my uh, in my description in my program then how are they going to be handled so 
so the basic problem that we have is uh, something like this Psy like uh, this is a program uh, whose name is chaining so here i have got a procedure p it has got a variable x of type integer and a procedure q so procedure q is defined inside procedure p so within procedure q another procedure r is defined so this begin end is the portion for r after that we have got so this begin is corresponding to the procedure q so procedure q up to this much so this is actually the definition part so the variables local procedures etc so they can be defined here so of course in this case we do not have any um, local uh, variable in procedure q so the nothing comes there however uh, if it is there then they can be defined in this portion then it this begin is for the body of procedure q so procedure q starts at this point so procedure q starts at uh, this point and then it gives a call to procedure r and then it is the end of q then uh, this is the begin of procedure p so procedure p starts at this point it gives a call to procedure q and that is the end of p and we have got this main program which is calling the procedure p so now uh, this is the situation like so environment with uh, local procedure so this is the situation like um, so current so we have got this um, so this is uh, uh, we will we'll need a concept of access link so let us explain that first then we will be coming back so for supporting local procedures variables may have various scopes so like say uh, suppose i have got a variable uh, reference here so this uh, Suppose I have got a uh, variable reference within a procedure that uh, gives us uh, like this that uh, say here I have got uh, a reference to uh, some variable like here I have got a reference to x. Okay. Now this x assigned as 2 now how are we going to handle this like when you are searching for this procedure uh, for this variable x so you do not find it find the definition here so you do not find the procedure uh, the x definition here so you need to go up and look into the nested uh, uh, next higher level procedure that is in procedure r now here after coming to this uh, sorry, sorry in procedure p so after coming to procedure p you find that the variable x is defined it may so happen that this x is not defined even here so x is defined globally so that way there is a hierarchy of uh, a hierarchy of this uh, uh, frames into which you need to look for and then uh, and that is defined by the scope of the language so it here it is said that if some in this particular language so it is assumed that if something is defined uh, here so that will be visible to the entire program if something is defined within p so that will be defined only within p so it is visible to uh, this uh, up to this much this uh, this uh, x will be visible okay because that is the begin of the end end the p ends at this point so up to this much this x is visible so how to take care of this situation so for that matter i need to know who in which sequence i should search the variables so this so, so so this x in this particular case you see that x is not local to the procedure at the same time x is not a global variable so this is a non local non global type of situation so it is defined in some higher level procedure but it is not defined here okay so the how to handle this uh, situation so that is uh, actually told here so this is for supporting uh, local procedures so variables may have various scopes so that may be there and to determine the definition uh, to determine the definition to be used for a reference to a variable it is needed to access non local non global variables so that is that is important that is a typically a type of uh, thing that we are coming across and these definitions are local to one of the procedures nesting the current one and need to look into the activation records of nesting procedure so we need to go up by one or several levels for uh, getting the corresponding definition so now how to do this traversal so that is important and for doing this we keep one extra bookkeeping information called access link so this access link comes uh, important here so another so we have got a uh, 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 frame pointer and control link previously which was storing the frame pointers now we will see that one access link will be in introduced 
so which are going to keep uh, note of this uh, next variable uh, next uh, procedure or next uh, nesting procedure so how this access link works see you, so this is the situation uh, so we are at currently at procedure r we are currently at procedure r so how did you come to procedure r so this is the main this is the activation record for the main so this that there is no access link because uh, it is at the highest level only then at procedure p we have got one access link that points to the uh, frame of main okay so this because if i do not find any definition in uh, procedure p from the nesting part i know that uh, this uh, definition has to be searched for the for a global variable so that way it is pointing to the uh, activation record of main now when we are at uh, procedure q so from p we have given a call to q and when did when we called this q so this next frame got created so this frame got created and in this frame we have got um, uh, so in this frame we have got uh, this thing your uh, this uh, frame pointer uh, frame pointer is there but this access link points to the uh, this activation record for p so and at the next level from p uh, from q we are giving a call to r so we, if we are within r then this access link points to the uh, frame corresponding to q so that if something is not found in r so it will be referring to procedure uh, q q's uh, definition and if something it is not found here also then it will find it here now you see here what has happened is that uh, so this procedure p within procedure p we have got procedure q and within q we have got procedure r if that was not the situation then of course this will not happen like this like say if if the situation was something like this so we have got this uh, procedure p okay so we have got some definitions and it is giving a call to procedure q but it is not defined inside this in that case so if this is procedure q in that case the the access link of procedure q will not point to the frame for p but it will point to the main routine so the access link for main routine because q is not nested within p so in this case what was happening is the q is nested within p so if in q we do not find some definition we can look into the uh, procedure p's uh, variables okay but if in this uh, in this particular example so p and q they are uh, two different procedures there is no nesting of p and q so even if uh, p calls q so if, so q cannot use the variables that are uh, local to p uh, as its variable okay so what you, what will be happening is that if some if some variable is referred here x is referred here so it will not look into the activation record for p for uh, getting and uh, getting the location for x but it will look into the uh, into the global variable so this will be more clear as we see uh, more and more examples now so this uh, uh, so this is the situation when the current procedure is r and to locate the definition of x it has to traverse through the activation records using access links and when the required procedure containing definition of x is reached it is accessed via offset from the corresponding frame pointer so the in this case uh, from for r it will go to um, uh, q and so at this point so so in the in procedure r there is a reference to x so when trying to generate code for that it will not find the reference x so with this access link tells me that you have to go to the uh, activation record for q so it will come here it will search for x here and again it will not find it then it will go up by one more level and it will come to this point and then it will search into this uh, local variables of this p and then it will get x so it has it will traverse by the access links to get the corresponding variable 